These problems don't look like quadratic equations, but they are. They're kind of quadratics in the hiding. What we're going to do to approach these is square both sides. Then we'll get a quadratic. We'll solve that for x. But then because we started with a square root, we need to be careful about our solutions. So we'll go back and test each of our solutions to see uh, if they work. Let's try that over here. If we square this side, x plus the square root of x plus 56, when you square that, it just becomes x plus 56. When you square this side, x becomes x squared. Now we'll arrange this like a quadratic by subtracting x, subtracting 56 from both sides, and we get 0 equals x squared minus x minus 56. That, I think we can factor, that would be x minus 8 and x plus 7. And if we set each of those individual factors equal to 0 and solve for x, you're going to get x equals 8 and x equals negative 7. Now if you plug 8 back in up here, 8 plus 56 would be 64, the square root of that is 8, and then you plug it in for this x as well, you get, x, uh, you get 8 equals 8. So that works. But if you plug a negative 7 up here, well I'm not even going to do the arithmetic on the left here because I would be putting a negative 7 in right here as well, and this, there's nothing you can take the square root of that's going to equal a negative 7. So that is not a solution, and our only solution is x equals 8. Let's try this next one. So if we square the left here, we would just get x plus 2. When we square the right, we're going to have to foil it. It's this quantity squared or multiplied by itself. So x minus 10 times x minus 10. And if you foil that, you should get x squared minus 10x minus 10x, so that's minus 20x plus 100. Now we'll arrange this as a quadratic by subtracting x and subtracting 2 and we get 0 equals x squared minus 21x plus 98. All right, so, so let's see if we can factor this one. 98 I know is 2 times 49, so that's 2 times 7 times 7. Ah, so you could have 14 and 7 as factors. That could add up to negative, or to 21. So yeah, I think we've got x minus 14 and x minus 7. When you solve those, you get x equals 14 and x equals 7. But we want to test both of these now. If I put 14 in here, 14 plus 2 is 16, the square root of that is 4. And if I put 14 in here, 14 minus 10 is 4. We get 4 equals 4. So that one works. How about the 7? 7 plus 2, square root of that, that's 9, square root of that is 3. Ah, but that does not equal 7 minus 10, which is a negative 3. So that one doesn't work. This one does. All right, the last one looks tricky because you've got two square root terms over here. And there is a method for doing this. You have to square it twice and rearrange terms, and it's a big mess. Before you get into that, you might want to ask yourself, is there some quantity you could take the square root of, add it to another thing you could take the square root of, and get a negative 5? I'm hoping you're going to say no, because the square root of whatever this is will be a positive number. The square root of whatever this is will be a positive number. There's no two positive numbers you can add together to get negative 5. So this one has no solution. So that's a little bit of work with these quadratics with radicals. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions off campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.